This, what you're hearing right now, is Din from F105, his song for celebration, because right now, what's going on in Chicago with Star Wars Celebration? Let's listen to a little bit at the top. We'll play it tonight in the live stream. For a take it, Din. I want to celebrate how great you are. Dark Lord himself, Darth Ward, is back on the show. Rob McDonald is here. How's it going, Rob? Well, what what can I say? It's uh, one of the greatest Star Wars weekends uh, of the year, Star Wars Celebration, so I had to show up. Uh, it's been really exciting so far. Uh, yeah, you had to show up. Are you in Chicago? It looks like you're not in Chicago. I am not. You know, no, I, I just had to show up on the live stream is what I meant, just right. to, to talk some more Star Wars again. That's what I mean. Well, this is not the live stream. <laughs> that is another show. This is just Unleashed. Right. Welcome to Unleashed. We're talking Mandalorian Unleashed. Darth Ward is joining me to talk Mandalorian Unleashed because nobody likes Mandalorian culture. Koi like Rob, he likes the fine dining of the Mandalorians, and he likes the dark sabers that they use as well. One of the first, one of the early on videos that we did, we did all these like weird little videos. You know, was it three years ago now? Three, four, three yeah, years like ago? The, something like that, two and a half maybe, something like yeah, that. Yeah, it was yeah. a while ago, and you did one on, on the history of Mandalore and Boba Fett and whatnot. So uh, you're here because you are somewhat excited for the Mandalorian. <laughs> Somewhat excited is an understatement because I literally feel like at this point I might be more excited for Mandalorian than Episode Nine, like Rise of Skywalker. But it's 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 close. It's close for me personally. It's really close. I I, I can't wait for the show, especially after this panel. Yeah, I think I. I'm going to say I think it's fair to say that you're excited for both. If you're excited for both, that's fine. I don't think we have to pin them against each other because I think the Mandalorian is going to be exciting. No, that's we don't. Happening, yeah. That's happening November 12th. And then we're going to be finished watching that November 12th. <laughs> Even if it's 48 hours long, we're going to finish it in one day. And then, you know, episode nine, well, Rise of Skywalker is coming. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, look, what we saw today, what we heard today was uh, was great. And you are going to walk us through all that. Yeah, and I, I think I just something to touch on. Uh, have they officially announced that uh, on the 12th they're going to release all the episodes? But you know, because regardless, they, 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 Rob, I will be watching all of them on November 12th. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the 12th is going to be an amazing day for the first episode at least because, yeah, I think it's been a weird thing that a bunch of these streaming servers have done now is just they've actually released them weekly, like similar to what like DC has done, like Hulu and Amazon and whatnot. And, yeah, just hearing everything about this, like just – uh, having uh, Favreau and uh, Filoni come out there and just talk about the show. Um, Ka Kathleen Kennedy showing up at the beginning as well, bringing out the cast, finding out who these cast members are officially going to be playing. Everybody knew that Pedro Pascal was playing the Mandalorian, but they officially said it. They showed, um, from what I hear uh, uh, in terms of the uh, clips, they showed him with the mask off and everything like that. So oh, really? It, uh it looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, there's there was there were some shots of like actually him in the costume and whatnot. Uh, we never got to see it on the live stream, but those lucky people uh, in uh, at Celebration did. I tweeted this so. out because we were in Chicago or Orlando for Celebration two years ago. We're not in Chicago now, obviously, yeah. but we were there for two years ago. And I tweeted out, you know, people were saying, "Oh, we're blacked out. This sucks." And yeah, on one hand, we're here right now, being like, "Oh, this sucks," but as as someone who has been to a celebration who has you know, taken time off of work to attend a celebration, who has you know, saved up money to attend a celebration, and who yeah. did not wait in line like a lot of people, but you know, waited in a lot of lines still to be at celebration. I, I am actually completely okay uh, with the people in Chicago getting treated to something that we were not. Because, I mean, look, look and it's unfortunate like, that I can't be there due to work. You can't be there because of work. We all can't be there for various reasons. Uh, and they mm -hmm. gave, they still like they don't have to live stream any of this, but they decide to. So for people that can't make it there, that's nice for us. For people who are there, who spent you know their hard-earned money and their time and all that, give them something. I'm completely okay with that. No, yeah, I'm completely okay with that too. Especially like considering you know something like uh, the episode nine um, 
panel, we pretty much on the live stream got to see everything that, from what I hear, that uh, everyone in the actual. Uh, I think there was a sizzle did, reel right? at the beginning. I think there was a sizzle, like uh, some kind of there, behind the there, scenes at the beginning, but you know. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right. So they did get something, but regardless, it's cool that at least they got something. I mean, I was personally as selfish as I am about really wanting to see something with this show. I wanted to see that trailer. I wanted to see something uh, more. But you know, from what we did see, I mean, we did get to see one little bit of video, which was them constructing, uh, uh, showing how the Mandalorian ship is going to look and how it was constructed. And that really got me excited too, is just showing them how they were doing the effects and whatnot, how they're kind of like doing it old school, like the old trilogy, all like, you know, miniatures and shooting sh shots like that. I mean, it's a TV show, so they got a smaller budget than the movie, so it kind of makes sense, number one, for budget-wise, that they would do something like that. And number two, just... Uh, in general, for me to just see them taking that older school approach is pretty exciting for me, at least. I love seeing that. Uh, yeah, that's funny. For me, I thought that was awesome stuff. I actually text Brock. He's He was working during the panel. And I said, mm -hmm. you're not really – like you're missing something, but you're not – like you are missing what Star Wars fans love, but you're not missing anything in terms of, of – you know, new like newsworthy, like oh my god, shock value. It was, it was, and that's yeah. what I got. That's what I got from this panel. The one actually thing that I really took away was the rapport between Filoni and Favreau was excellent. I thought. Yeah, absolutely. Especially when they got into it at the beginning, how they basically said that, like uh, back in the older days when they uh, they actually both worked on Sky. Uh, I believe it was at Skywalker Ranch, Ranch where they said it where. Um, Filoni was first working on season one of Clone Wars and he was working on it there and Favreau was actually there working on Iron Man and that like they both met each other there and they both said hey it's like hey well, I'm working on this thing and Favreau was one of the first people to see Clone Wars at that time and then uh, um, uh, Filoni got to come in and would be one of the first people to see Iron Man which was which is also a really cool story and like how they just basically first formed that bond and, and Favreau said it's like hey if you ever need a voice or something like that and of course, he uh, went on the voice pre Vizsla on the show for Clone Wars, which is just awesome. Well, and, yeah. talk talk to me a little bit about that because I did go into a little bit more detail on that and about a certain saber as well. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's uh, that was a cool part of it too, where they got into it and they were like basically talking about like those. So, they, uh, there were several arcs like uh, that took place uh, Mandalorian wise uh, on Clone Wars, and the specific one was when they introduced Pre Vizsla and the Dark Saber. And when they talked about how they revealed that basically they said, "Hey, we got this lightsaber." I forget what the exact word they used. They used like a fake white lightsaber word, and they and then uh, they showed it to Lucas, and Lucas was like, "Oh, there's no way that would go up against the lightsaber, right? That it would be able to hold its contact, right? It would just get cut in half by a lightsaber." And then uh, George Lucas basically leaves, and then he calls him back the next day and just basically like, "Hey, I created something for you. It's called the Dark Saber," and then created this whole lore about it. So that was an it, it, uh, that was a really cool part of the story. You just hear about it and George Lucas's fingerprints being all over that part of the uh, Mandalorian lore. One thing that I've noticed about this weekend as a whole is how much we've heard the name George Lucas praised by from Episode Nine, Rise of Skywalker to Mandalorian he's such a huge I mean he is Star Wars in a lot of ways and I think a lot of people were concerned that maybe they're forgetting what he wanted to do but you know just we'll touch on this like really quickly the rise of Skywalker J.J. Abrams apparently reportedly met with Lucas to find out how to bring Shivi back so it look it's Lucas has his fingerprints all over this even though he's not as involved as he was and he you know or he's barely involved but he did rob Darth Ward visit the set of the Mandalorian yeah, he did. Yeah, they they, they didn't really I I uh, they didn't really mention any specifics as to what he might have done there. Maybe they just didn't want to reveal parts of it. But I'm sure that George Lucas came over there, had a few input things, and pr we're gonna find to probably find out later like what was his and you know what what he helped out with because yeah uh, I think Favreau and Filoni like almost. Um, I'm not going to say more, but just as much as J.J. Uh, value his input and his uh, his take on it all, especially considering that how much uh, of a, um, how much Filoni was under Lucas's tutelage, especially at the beginning. I love the comment that Favreau said that any director that came in to work on the project had to be a Star Wars fan. Was that important to, for you to hear? Uh, no, yeah, absolutely. Like Just knowing that... Um, 
that the, these these are all people that are passionate about Star Wars, and especially like when the the story in that trailer in that uh, panel that really got me was when. Um, Pedro Pascal first talked about, and he, was, he basically said, oh, I'm born in 1975, right? So I was like, he was the prime age for these movies, right? That he was this young kid watching the Star Wars movies. And then when he found out, like, uh, from Favreau that he got the chance to be uh, uh, in Mandalorian, and he was, like, asking him, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll totally be in it. What do you want me to be, like, uh, uh, an insect, or I forget the exact words they said. He was just fine being anything, and then he's like, no, I want you as the Mandalorian. And uh, that was just that was just awesome. That was a part of it. And just seeing his uh, that there not only the director's passion for Star Wars, but seeing the cast passion for Star Wars. I mean, Gina Carano seemed like she was one of the newer ones for for it. But Carl Weathers coming out and just soaking it all in. Like the fact that he even said it's like this might be one of the biggest like you know uh, franchises he's been a part of, and that's huge. Considering that, I mean, he was Apollo Creed. Yeah, I think. Um... Gina Carano and uh, and and Carl Weathers. Gina Carano was very, I think, overwhelmed by the whole experience. I think she was just kind of like, she. I think she. I think you can know what you're in for, but you never really know until you're in it. And just the awe that was on her face of like, I mean, they they were in that room with like ten thousand people. And I saw, I was watching, um, because I'm a huge Jar Jar Binks guy, I watched the Ahmed Best uh, sh- uh, stage, the stage show. He came out and was interviewed right. by the Star Wars show. And and we mm-hmm. were there two years ago, and this was like at least twice, as, like twice, three times as many people. And Andrew's been reporting, and he's like, this is crazy. He's like, well, we saw, I don't think he said this on, on camera or not, but he said to me a few times, he's like, he's like, James, it's like, as big as Orlando was, multiply that, because this is freaking ginormous right now. And I, so I really think she was in awe, and Carl Weathers was as well. And we saw the, the episode nine. The, I keep saying episode nine. Every time we see episode nine, Rob, we got to put a toonie in a jar, and that's going to pay for us to go to um, the next celebration because I think I'm already down like twenty bucks. So <laughs> every time, in, we- instead, instead of uh, yeah, that was that, that was the case for me over the last couple of days too. I still call it episode nine because yeah, yeah. just the rise of Skywalker. It's got to get uh, ingrained in us. A and bit, no so. one has said it verbally. <laughs> like I've never heard anyone like. Abrams, uh, you know, Ridley, Boyega, any of no one has said like, well, they probably have. I just haven't seen the footage of it. I think Kathleen Kennedy did, so I might be a liar. Uh, but, you know, like it hasn't like, anyway, so every time you do a Rob, Tuning goes in the jar. I'm down 20 bucks at least already. So, um, yeah, I forgot. I'm what probably I about the same amount yeah. already, yeah. All right, we're 40 <laughs> bucks in. We can get ourselves a pizza if it's in Chicago again, which sounds like that's the only convention center on the planet that can hold the amount of Star Wars fans. It's good to know that Star Wars yeah. is dead once again uh yeah but anyway it's just like so massive so she seemed like she was overwhelmed the people at the at the rise of skywalker you know you saw uh chewbacca i'm not even gonna pre- try to pronounce his name but he was like just like reveling in like the atmosphere it's just it's so big and i can see her being over overwhelmed for sure and carl weathers was like this is like star wars <laughs> which was a <laughs> you know, it was a cool comment yeah, uh, it, it was really cool. Yeah, just uh, seeing like you know they they obviously revealed their names. Uh, Gina Carano was playing Cara Dune in the, in the show, and then uh, Carl Weathers is playing uh, Grief Karga. So they they kind of got into the characters and just mentioning who they are a little bit and the way that you know they were they revealed that uh, the, the person that Gina Carano is playing Cara Dune is an ex shock trooper. So that's kind of cool, and you know seeing the way that's going to all play into it all. Just so I asked. Uh... I asked Andrew if he saw the Shock Trooper Black Series, which was a Target exclusive, to get it for him. And he saw one. That, yeah. He saw one, and it was way too expensive. And so that just gives you a, a hint. I didn't. I didn't buy it because it's too expensive. But yeah, that is my favorite character on the Mandalorian. Mic drop. I'm already <laughs> calling it. Okay, you know me, like Finn. Uh, Finn. I think that's a Stormtrooper. Phasma. I like Phasma. Shut up. Uh, cause they look cool. That's why you like Mandalorians because they look cool. Then you, then you give them the history after we worry about that after. So I'm totally excited to see, uh, to see an ex shock shock trooper in this one. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just can't wait to it all. Like I, I was kind of expecting maybe like some of the other people might show up, like, especially, you know, getting the pretty much semi confirmation that Taika Waititi is uh, IG 88. Um, I thought that we maybe, maybe Taika might show up or some of those other guys, but you know, uh, still, just I, I I can't tell you, James, how much I'm like anticipating this show, no, you especially when they 
Well, no, it, 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 the, the number one thing is like I had it in my head the whole time about what I wanted this show to be, and the way that uh, when Pedro Pascal talked about uh, this character, and then he, when he was like asking Filoni and Favreau about what, like you know, what the feel of this character to be, and he literally said the same thing I've been thinking that it's like look at like Sergio Leone movies, look at Akira Kurosawa, right? Lone gun gunslinger, like Clint Eastwood is somebody that he said that he was he was uh, drawing like you know inspiration from, which is just. It, it, it's amazing because again, it's gonna be it's gonna be the western of the uh, of the, all Star Wars. Like it seems like like at least live action content. That's what's gonna be, and I can't wait. I just want to give a shout out to Jeff Wilson who just did while we're recording this. I never tell me the odds on the show floor with Andrew Fantasia. I think he did anyway. I hope he did. Uh, shout out to him for that. He's there. If you guys are in celebration, you want to meet up with Andrew, just uh, let us know and we can. Uh, Andrew will run away probably because that's how, no. Andrew is fine to meet up with you. <laughs> Rob, I got a really genius idea. Mandalorian drops November twelfth, maybe in Canada. We don't know. If it doesn't, we're going to road trip that day down. It's my sister's birthday. We're going to road trip down to the United States of America. We're going to find someone who lives in Buffalo. I know a couple. We're going to find someone who lives in Buffalo. We're going to break into the house or they let us in. One or the other. We, we, we're not trying to be criminals. We're going to go in. And then we're going to watch the episode of The Mandalorian. But while we do that, Rob, we are going to record your reaction the entire time you watch that hour-long episode. The whole thing. Just you watching it for the first time. We're recording. Are you in? I'm to I, I'm totally in. I I want to I want to give content to the people. I want them to see my uh my joy of this thing because it's it's literally off the wall. Like I, I. I, I, I don't don't get me wrong. When I mentioned at the beginning, where I'm like, oh, I might be just as excited for the Mandalorian as I'm at episode nine. It's not like episode nine uh, enjoyment is like over here, down here. It's it's at the top already too, and Mandalorian's up there as well. So, I'm down. You know, record me watching it. You'll see a huge smile on my face the whole time, and just uh, I can't wait for the show. I I just want to. I want episode one right now. <laughs> I have the I I have. And if I, sorry, go on, go on. Oh, oh, if I had heard like afterwards, it's like oh, afterwards they played episode one for the crowd. I'd be like, why didn't I go to Chicago? <laughs> I kind of had a feeling. They might uh, so I thought they were going to show him, but I didn't realize it when I said that. I didn't realize that it wasn't coming out until um, until November twelfth. Yeah. So, so look, I think Favreau had said we have to go finish it. Jokingly, he said that, but I don't think they're far enough along to have anyone for anyone to have seen. Now maybe they did, and we'll find reports coming out. Uh, but what do you make of it taking place five years after uh, Return of the Jedi? I mean, it's a perfect time because it's literally like the number one question mark right now that we're all looking at, right? Like we, like people still want to know, like in that gap, like what happened to everybody, right? Like we we're constantly getting like little holes filled out with like you know stuff like Battlefront Two and whatnot. And I mean, we got the new game that they announced yesterday, but that's taking place after uh, Revenge of the Sith, not that not at that time. So that's still a full, cool uh, timeline to get into. But yeah, it's like a, a perfect time because. I mean, myself from Mandalore history, I don't know what uh, the the, uh, the specifics about Mandalore's history are going on in that time frame. So I'd love to see that. Excuse me a moment. Um, yeah, we don't know how much of a Mandalorian, like uh, aside from the lead character of, uh, being a Mandalorian, uh, how much Mandalore is going to play a factor into the show. But still, I'd like to see just at least a, an episode or two finding out what Mandalore's uh, that, that that history is like at around that time because the the time frame that we know what's going on in Mandalore most of, most of the time is uh, the prequel trilogy era to uh, um, obviously with Rebels just before A New Hope but I want to see what's going on in Mandalore later. It, they kind of said um, what well, they didn't kind of they they actually did say uh, John Favreau said that him and Filoni when they were doing the Clone Wars there you go they would talk a lot about Mandalore and like where was it in the original trilogy where was it in the prequel trilogy or not yeah where was it in, in everything and he said now we're just kind of painting it in so I don't know in the first season I, I don't know how much we will get of the history of Mandalore I'm sure there'll be little drops here and there but it's been it's being reported that it has already been renewed for a second season so i can see the mandalore exploration developing more over time because look, i think you know shows of i think have worked like this forever is that the first season you've got to get us in and hook us and then after that you can be like all right here's the important backstory that you need to be aware of 
No, yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, just something called the Mandalorian, you would expect at least a little bit of Mandalore uh, stuff in there. But regardless, I'm like I said, what hypes me most about it is just the description of these characters and just hearing uh, Favreau and Filoni and Pedro Pascal specifically talk about this show, and uh, that's what's getting me hyped about it. Because I didn't hear a single thing that I did not like out of this panel. Nothing. You heard nothing. Myself. Made yeah, like. yeah. No, nothing. Like even when they, when they, yeah. Like I, I thought there'd be something that I could take away, and it's like, oh, maybe that's a little bit cause for concern. But it was like, I, I, I loved everything that they said, and you know, um, we, we talked about the ship, but yeah, they revealed that it's called uh, the Razor's Crest. It and looks even dope. That, the, the, it, it looks awesome. Like I, I kind of want to like. I know you can't find it anywhere, but when it does come out, I want that model and I want that uh, in my room, just sitting there for me to look at. Well, so, you got me the Boba Fett uh, uh, ship diecast, and now I'm like, move over, Slave One. We yeah. have a new one. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I still love that. I still love the Slave One. But yeah, you got me that. And I'm like, I saw this. I was like, I, I need you for my collection. You need to come now. Yeah. Let's do this. I'm so actually, I got another idea for you, Rob. You've seen Fanboys. Let us, let's get together, all rebel scum, let's get us, we'll take a road trip down to Skywalker Ranch, and we will steal, not the first episode of Mandalorian, not the second episode, but that model on Favreau's desk. Let's go. Let's do it. Anybody watching, let's, you can go let, with let, us. Let, <laughs> let, way. We'll just do the entire thing. We've turned uh, into I, thieves. I hope no. <laughs> Look what you've done to us, Star Wars. We're thieves. It's it's the the passion. It flows through our veins. We want to see it all. <laughs> Seriously, oh man, it, yeah, it, yeah. I mean, I, so look, they they showed this trailer, the or the, I think it was like a sizzle reel, similar to what they showed uh, for Rogue One uh, two two years ago now, three years ago, three years ago. Yeah, it's what I heard. It's what I heard. I believe it was something like yeah, just seeing some footage and then. Um, footage with like interviews with uh cast members and like people that worked on it i think that's what it pretty much was um but but it ended with a standing ovation is what i've been reading on twitter apparently the room went nuts and they all stood up and applauded that uh footage that was three and a half minutes long i believe because there was a countdown for all of us watching on youtube with some like i won't lie though the music it's star wars music so it was it was still like i'm like i don't care i like the music i'm just gonna listen yeah, I wonder if that's because they announced that uh, Ludwig Gordonson is uh, producing the music for it. So I wonder if that was one of his pieces or somebody else did it. Because yeah, the guy just won an Oscar, right? And that yeah. score for Black Panther was pretty dope too. So solid. Yeah, I, I, I I can't wait for it. Yeah, solid, solid pickup. Solid uh, pickup for them at all. Anything else you want to mention about the Mandalorian before we call this one a day? No, I feel like we pretty much covered it. I mean, the only other cool thing I would like to mention is that they had, they revealed uh, at one point when they were shooting, they were just like, for some reason, they were like, oh, we don't have enough Stormtrooper costumes and stuff yes. like that. And just hearing the story where they brought in the 501st uh, in um, and they got to be on set and all that type of stuff. That's that's really cool for them. Yes. I was, that's the only other thing I think we should mention yeah, for sure. Yeah, I like when Filoni said, I've got some friends. And that is, yeah, good on them. Because, you know, we got to... I've seen their costume at uh, Fan Expo, I believe. And then um, Aaron and I checked them out at, at like, the, where they had the display at Celebration. And, you know, again, you look, you follow them on Instagram and all that, and you see pictures of them. But it's it, we were sitting beside a few uh, for the um, closing ceremonies. And just the hard work and the and the passion they have putting into those things and just and they're and look Filoni and Favreau said they F- Filoni said he's like sometimes they look better than the movies and and when you're there you're like, how, like I don't even know how to begin to do what they're doing with those costumes so I'm so I'm very happy that they get to be a part of this because this show sounds like it's going to be something special and it's going to live I don't know if it's going to last a long time on on Disney Plus or not because it might only have a lifespan of two three seasons for all we know what the story is I don't know but it seems like it's going to live on. You know, in the in the Star Wars canon lore for a long, long, long time, and I think in twenty years we'll be doing an anniversary for the Mandalorian show for sure. Fingers crossed, James. I can't wait. <laughs> Cannot wait. All right, Darth Ward. Thanks for joining me. You're going to be appearing on the live stream today as well, seven p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. May the force of others be with you. Always. Hey scumbags, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up on our video 
As always, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Rebel Scum Podcast, for all the latest videos.